the five fundamental fallacies about ergonomic design. The first one is that the design is satisfactory for me. It will therefore, therefore be satisfactory for everybody else. So designer sets himself or herself as the standard and whatever he or she thinks, of course, <coughs> based on some intuition and knowledge, but he or she sets himself or herself to be the standard. And if he feels that design is okay for me, it looks good. So it should be satisfactory for everybody else. Now this fallacy seems to be obviously a fallacy, but this is something that happens practically many times. That we don't involve the users in the process. Users are not involved in the process. So users are ignored or we even don't think of actually who will be the user of this, of this for example product or tool or equipment. And we assume that okay if it is okay for me, it, it looks okay to me as a designer, then it will be okay for everybody else as well. So that is a fallacy. You need to identify the user these are uh, needs and capabilities and then you have to design the uh, product or tool, whatever you're going to design. The second and third and the fifth are even more important uh, to understand. The second fallacy is that this design is satisfactory for an average person. This is a very common, perhaps most common fallacy. It will therefore be satisfactory for everybody else. Now, if we have to design a product for, let's suppose, for a population of, let's, let's say, 1,000 people. I have to make a product of one size. Let's suppose I have to design a chair, let's suppose, uh, that will be used by 1,000 people. So what should be different dimensions of, uh, of that chair? Uh, on what, what basis I will decide the dimensions of that chair, for example, or any, any other product that I'm going to design? So one idea is that you should design for an average person. Now this could, could be a physical product and this could be design of information as well. In either case, it is a fallacy. This is a wrong concept. That if you design for an average person, it will be satisfactory for everybody else or even it is wrong to say that it will be satisfactory for most of the other people. And if you know the basics of statistics, this fallacy should be clear to you that why this is a fallacy. If you draw the, for example, distribution of the population, at the center is the, for a perfect normal distribution, at the center is the median or mean. So if you make something exactly to an average person, it will be fit for that one dimension or some dimensions around that. So it will not be even fit for 50% of the population. It will be generally fit for less than 50%. So this is one of the most common fallacies and uh, we will discuss it in further detail in the topic of anthropometry. But if you know the basics of statistics, you should understand what it is, why it is a fallacy. The third is the variability of human beings is so great that it cannot possibly be catered for in any design. This fallacy is actually related to the second fallacy. But since people are wonderfully adaptable, it doesn't matter anyway. At this stage that humans are very different from each other. Their physique, their body sizes, their height, for example, they are very different from each other. From, for example, different ethnic backgrounds, from area to area, the people are very different. So it is not possible actually to, uh, to design something that is suitable for uh, majority or all of the people. So what is the solution? We assume that people are adaptable. So you design according to your own intuition and, and knowledge without uh, sort of considering uh, the users and just make the product or tool or equipment. And people will eventually be able to uh, adapt according to 
uh, according to the design that you have made. So that is actually called fitting the man to the job, FMG. So you design the job and job means it could be workplace or it could be something else that the person will be using. So design the job and the person will fit according to that. So fit the man to the job. Because there is so much variation that it is not possible to design something that is suitable for all or maximum of the people. The fourth fallacy is that ergonomics is expensive. And since products are actually purchased on appearance and styling, ergonomic considerations may conveniently be ignored. So this assumes that actually people buy product based on how good they look, how good their shape is, how good the design, apparent design or style is. So they actually don't give ergonomic considerations too much important. So you can easily ignore ergonomic aspects and focus more on appearance, aesthetics, and styling. Actually, ergonomics is just a fancy word. It is actually not required during the design. Fifth fallacy is that ergonomics is an excellent idea. Just opposite to the fourth fallacy, that this is an excellent idea. I always design things with ergonomics in mind but I do it intuitively and rely on my common sense. So I don't need tables of data or empirical studies. Ergonomics is good, but it is, it is not requiring data. You only use your intuition, common sense, judgment, and you don't actually need to collect data from the, from the people who will be uh, using that product, the user population. So these are the five fallacies. First and fifth are sort of related that you design according to your own judgment or intuition. And if you don't need data, you don't need to consider user population. Second is technically, second and third are technically uh, oriented. One is saying that you, you can't actually cater for the variations in humans, this is too much, this cannot be catered for. And second says, yes, it can be catered for by designing the product for every person, whether it is a product or information. And fourth says that ergonomics is a, is a stupid idea. You actually don't need ergonomics at all. Focus on appearance and styling and don't worry too much about ergonomics. So do ask question if this fallacy doesn't seem to you a fallacy because these are very important. So if you understand uh, the opposite aspect of something that why something is wrong, you can understand why the opposite is true. Thank you very much.